And the Castle Lager One Day International Cricketer of the Year is... Kirchiso Rabada. And the Castle Lager Test Cricketer of the Year is... Kirchiso Rabada. And the Ram Delivery of the Year is... It's a little unfair because we saw two deliveries, but both were just as good. Kirchiso Rabada. And the SA Fans Cricketer of the Year is... Kirchiso Rabada. <laughs> And the SA Players Player of the Year is Kahiso Rabada. The SA Cricketer of the Year is Kahiso Rabada. Right, now time to speak to a gentleman who I'm sure everybody wants to hear from, everybody wants to speak to as well, and it's my privilege to have a chat with Kajiso Rabada, or KG. I'll put KG out there straight away so that we go with KG. You're happy with that, are you? Yeah, I'm happy. Anything. Yeah. You can call me anything. Really? No, yeah. well, it's got to be your name. I mean, yeah, so KG is... KG or Kajiso, either or. Okay, right. Pre no, no real preferences. Not really. Okay. So... Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I mean, let's go backwards and, and talk about this year that you've had, uh, a dream year. Is it still kind of in your mind playing out? Do you still kind of sit at home and, and think about it all? Well, I guess since we're always playing so much, you, know, you never really get to think about it too much. But there are times where you think back and you realize how quickly things go by. And... Um, uh, we've created some good memories so far on the field and off the field and you, you tend to um, spend some time just thinking about it and then um, you, you, you play a game um, and then you kind of forget about it because you're in the moment and then so the, there's always a time where you sort of ponder over it for a little bit and then you play. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reason we, we speak about all of this right now is because you've been nominated for many awards at Cricket South Africa's awards and um, to go through the year and to think about it all is kind of a, a nice way to sort of go towards those nominations. How do you feel about being nominated? Do you know about your nominations? I suppose that's the first place to start. Yeah, um, I remember I was in England and then I think it was my parents or my dad who, who let me know um, that I was nominated for, I think it's four, four, or f four awards, or whatever. Um, but, you know, I'm really grateful. It's an honor um, to have been nominated for those awards. Um, it's a, I've worked really hard, I guess. Um, it's, it's, the hard work has paid off. Um, it would be nice to, to win um, some, some of the awards, but, you know, if I don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, but I feel, it's, I feel like it's an honor that I've been awarded, I've been nominated. Nominated, yeah. Um, let, let's systematically go through kind of the timeline. And in my mind, I, I, I go back to Bangladesh. Um, does that seem a, a long way away now? Or is it all still very condensed in your mind, how all of this has gone? It does feel like it's a long time away, long time ago. Mm. But at the same time, you know, at times, you know, it feels like it was only yesterday. I don't know, it's weird. You know, if you think that I've only been playing for two years, when you actually look at it in the sense that um, it's only been two years, it's, like, oh, it's, not that, it's not a long time ago, but because we've been playing so much, it seems like it's, it's been a long time ago. Mm -hmm. you know, so I've really enjoyed it, though, so far. It's been... It has been a roller coaster. It hasn't all been up. <laughs> there have been downs as well. But um, it's been a good year. I'll take it for myself. Um, it's been a good year for the team. It's, I think it's been okay. I think we could do better. But 
yeah, um, hopefully start off fresh next season. Do you have preferences in as far as the game is concerned? You know, you, you speak to guys and some guys are sometimes pigeonholed by us who are commentators. You'd say this guy's kind of better suited to test matches and the other guy's better suited to 2020s and the other guy's better suited to one day games. Uh, do you have a preference or do you just kind of play the game, whatever it is, whatever format? Yeah, well, all I want to do is to represent the country and to try my best and to play at the highest level against the best players. I enjoy playing all the formats. All the formats are very different um, and I think there's a challenge because all three formats require different skills um, and they have different challenges. So it's a challenge, you know, you'll be playing T20s and then you'll play um, one day cricket and then from one day cricket you go test cricket. So I think T20 cricket has added a different dynamic in cricket over the recent years. And um, I think it's a great challenge. Like I said, you have to have different set of skills for, uh, for all the formats. I wouldn't say I have a preference. I think that maybe test cricket is, is probably still up there right now. However, I think that all the formats I enjoy have got mm -hmm. different pressures, different challenges. Okay. Then, see, I was talking in, in terms of playing, and I think you kind of slipped over to importance with regard to you know the standing of the game. I don't, personally, I don't think that it matters with regard to who holds what important. But players themselves determine sometimes, um, and you hear the older players talk about Test cricket being the pinnacle. But I think that comes much later when you get to your thirties. What are you, twenty-one now? Yeah. Yeah. Twenty one just oh yeah, happy birthday for the other day. You're going to the West Indies. I saw that all those Yeah, well it isn't the other day. <laughs> you you're on your way to the West Indies and there was cake on the plane and all of that. That was all very nice. How was the West Indies for you? Oh it was it was actually quite challenging, you know, going playing in different different conditions in the different islands. Um playing against West Indies and Australia. I think it was my first tri-series, yes. Um, it was a good challenge. Um, it got tough. You, know, you play on some kids' a small ground and play against some good batters. Um, I think it was up and down for me. But on the whole, I think it was, it was a good experience. Um, and I think it was, performance-wise, I think I did just OK. Um, Without being too harsh on myself, obviously, I think I did a, okay. But it was a good experience. There's a rich vein of history um, in terms of cricket there in the West Indies. Lots of great players have played there. It was just nice to travel around all the stadiums. You go to Trinidad and you see all the pictures, the paintings of the, of the, the past players like Will Richards, Lara, all those guys on the walls. It's, quite historic, people there, they love their cricket. Um, so in that sense, it was nice to go there. Um, and it was just nice to, to travel the world and chill on the beaches there, I guess. <laughs> it was not all about the cricket, but yeah. good people there as well. So it was good, no. Would you say you were a good tourist? And by that, I mean, do you take in that sort of stuff? So in the various countries that you've been to already, um, with the South African side, Bangladesh, um, India, and the West Indies, do you take in what's around and kind of the history of, I suppose, cricket, but of the countries themselves as well? Yeah, I, I've always wanted to travel the world, so I'm lucky that I can do it as my job. So it's the best. Um, I've got no complaints, but it's nice, you know, to to see how other people live, um, to compare the different countries, and you know, to to really learn about different ethnics, I guess, because um, you can also grow as a person, you know, learning other people's heritage and whatever. I don't know. If you can do much in India, because it's so crazy. <laughs> uh, it's crazy there. It's just 
very um, frantic and uh, high paced and everyone there knows the cricketers um, however in India it's just we play cricket and chill in the hotel quite a bit but other places like um, New Australia and West Indies or England or wherever you can actually go out and explore you can't do much exploring in India but at the end of the day we go for the cricket that's that's the priority and India is great for the experience the cricket experience there I must say playing in front of massive crowds I think the one time we played in indoor um, I think it was the third one there and we as I was running in I couldn't hear myself breathe I was bowling the second over couldn't hear myself run in it was absolutely crazy also when I think it was Dale who ran in the first over like I couldn't hear anything couldn't hear the ball off the bat nothing so it was good it's good like that you know, experiencing different crowds different grounds enjoying it you spoke of not just highs in the time that you've been in the side and in this year particularly when I think back and you said you could have had a, a better year not you personally but as a side speak then of the lows first before you get to to the highs and what goes through your mind and how it's challenged you as a person and number two how you've dealt with those lows in this short space of time where you've been at the top of the game so to speak in terms of levels people always say it's a cliche that it's inevitable you're gonna have a bad game or you know a bad run um, but at the same time it's you, it's not easy to understand when you do have a bad game you know you feel disappointed um, one low maybe the World Cup um, against the West Indies you know, really getting knocked out of that round especially because I bowled the, the last over two and Brathwaite absolutely cleaned me up <laughs> but you know looking back it is what it is it's happened and you have to learn from it I guess that's another cliche but um, another low I guess in the West Indies a couple of games where I didn't feel I had performed that well and also as a team you know we couldn't win the tri-series tri um, we couldn't beat Australia here um, in the T20, T20 series so there's been a whole lot you know, Stokes he smashed us everywhere in Newlands it wasn't the best feeling but you know I think you should never give up and perseverance again uh, all these words are always thrown out every single day and you just need to keep calm and keep moving forward and keep your head down speak about the highs then and you know what comes to your mind as I speak about that and I'm concentrating on just the year gone by because you know that's what you've been nominated for and as far as awards are concerned and speak about them and one how it feels at the time number two how you deal with it you know keep your head down keep moving forward but you've just taken seven for and you've just got to carry on you know do you dwell do you move on do you forget it quickly what happens well, you can't forget those special moments and I think you learn you learn to to appreciate those moments more when you have a bad day um, you, know, you just keep keep having to um, motivate yourself through the the bad times and the good times too um, you know it's not the end of the road and you're only as good as your last game I guess but you have to celebrate the special times and I think we do each and every player who plays well um, will, will be um, awarded or will be what's the word I'm looking for will be rewarded or celebrated so success is celebrated it's part of the team culture but you celebrate with your family um, but at the same time you have to be happy about it but um, you have to keep moving forward and I guess keep trying to improve okay before I ask you which awards you want to win and um, 
which one you desperately would like. It, yeah, you'd say all of them. You said at the start it would be nice to win, you know, some, one, whichever one. How was your time in England? You famously said, you know what, I don't want to go off to IPL. I'd like to learn a bit more about myself, go to England. You went and you played for Kent. How did that go? And how hard, how easy? What have you learned? I've learned a lot. Um, the wickets there that we played on, it's, it's, a, it's the summer now in England, so it's quite dry. The guys were telling Some me... Someone debate with you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I came in, I came in at, the, at the wrong time. So the guys were telling me, hey, you should have come here in May, in April, around there. There wasn't a score over 200. It was just green, green wickets everywhere. But I guess, you know, it's, it's going to be a time where you bowl on flat wickets. And I guess, you know, I've learned a bit to bowl in those type of conditions because you have to think more on how you're going to get a wicket. So there's another difference. You know, four-day cricket, the batsman's not going to give his wicket away. T20 cricket, you bowl four overs where the batsman's either hit or miss. For the cricket or test cricket, you need to find a way to get him out. Otherwise, he bats the whole day. So see, it's different challenges. Um, so bowling on those flat wickets, you know, you need to think quite a bit. I mean, the ball bounces come up to there, so you can't really take the batter's feet away. Or so you have to think of other ways to do it. And yeah. It's just, cricket is a very tactical game, I, I think. So, that's helped me in that regard. If you could speak to your mates at school, or, you know, from school, and you probably don't have too many more mates at school, having turned 21 now, it's a few years behind you, but all the guys who you kind of grew up playing cricket with, to try and explain to them the difference, if any, of the cricket you would have played with them, and the cricket you now play. Could you encapsulate that? Could, is there something that you see as a fundamental difference that you say, oh, the change was this? Well, you play under a lot more pressure. Um, you play against better opposition and better wickets. It's much more professional. Um, you're not playing for yourself, you're playing for your country. Although, when you were younger, you play for the school, or the, so now it's, your weight is even bigger. You play for the country. Um, you get treated well, of course, I guess. Um, you have to do interviews. There's lots more responsibility, <laughs> like now. <laughs> you, you, do you like those or not? Um, yeah. I don't mind doing it. I know it's, it's what comes with the package, of being a cricketer. Um, yeah, so you have a lot of responsibility. And um, playing at school, you know, there's a bit of a laugh. You play at school, you make jokes on the field. It's very fun in games, but it's serious at the same time. But it's way more relaxed. Um, yeah, it's just way more relaxed. Okay. Tell me then. Which award? We're joking around saying Kakhisa Rabada has been nominated for just about every award. Might even get like Groundsman of the Year or something like that. You must be really happy, as you said, about being nominated. But if you were to choose one award to win, which would it be that you'd want to win desperately? Um, I honestly couldn't say. Maybe for fun and games. I don't know if Moni and Moko will be happy with me. But maybe the ball, <laughs> the best ball of the year. <laughs> Moni, Moni won't be happy with me for that. Why not? Because he's nominated for it as well. <laughs> okay, for fun and games. But you seem to kind of be in that space where you say, not really. You're quite, just quite happy to be nominated. And if you win, you're just as happy. Yes. What would you do? How would you celebrate if you won? Say you won three awards. Well, it would mean a lot to me, like I said. It's an honor to be nominated. And for... How does the voting system work? Do people vote or...? 
there's there, there's one that is like that, but then generally it will be cast of ju judges who will collect yeah, well, your information and kind of decide on how things go. And, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, if it's fair, it has to be fair. The winner has to be fair, but um, if they choose you, and they think that you're the, the best, um, it's great, you know, because that's what we want to do as sportsmen. We want to be the best we can be, to be the best. So if if they think that I was I I I was the best or I deserve to win, then great. It means a lot to me. Mm. But if I don't, and it's fair, then I'm not the best. So I have to keep working. Okay. Thanks for chatting to us. Final thought as I let you go, and all the best with the nominations and. I'd like to talk to you or hear from you if you win. And if you don't, either way, I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more. How much are you looking forward to the next season? No, I'm very excited, actually. I've just had my first taste of what international cricket is like. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I think I'm excited to, to see what challenges lie ahead. Um, I think I've set, settled in a bit. Not, not fully. I don't think you can ever settle in. Um, I've played against almost every single team. Um, I've played on almost every single type of conditions. So I'm really excited. Um, I hope I can do well. I hope I can contribute to the team. I hope that our team has a, a great year if I make the team. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'm excited to see what other players are going to do too. Okay. All the very best and thanks very much for chatting to us. Nice. There you go. Here's what I'm about.